adding your Azure SQL DB, your Elastic Pool, your managed instance to your database watcher, I show you how on today's Tales from the Field. Everybody just do your thing. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. If this is your first time finding us on Tales from the Field, give us a like and hit that subscribe. We here on Tales from the Field drop content on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. On Tuesdays, we have a roundtable where we share blogs, videos, posts put together by you, MVPs of the Azure Data community for the Azure Data community. And on Mondays and Wednesdays, we have this thing we like to call MS Tech Bits. You're watching one of those now. Let's get over to it. In our previous video on Database Watcher, we did a simple deploy. And we added a SQL target when we started the process so we could show how we can monitor our Stack Overflow 2013 database. But what if our data state is growing? On the screen, I'm showing a bunch of different deployments. I have some Azure SQL databases, an Elastic Pool, a managed instance. But how do we go ahead and add those after we've deployed a database watcher? Well, we're going to go here to our SQL connectors. And we could see when we hit Add, we could choose SQL database, an Elastic Pool, or a managed instance. Let's start by deploying a SQL database. We're going to select SQL database, put in our subscription, put in our server that hosts our Azure SQL DB, and select the connection database there from the dropdown. Now, we're not going to use it for read intent or use SQL authentication, so we're going to go ahead and hit Add. With our SQL database added there, we need to grant access. We're going to select Azure SQL database and Elastic Pools with Microsoft Entre. We're going to go ahead and copy that command and we're going to go over to Azure Data Studio, connect to the server that's hosting our databases that we just added. And inside master, we're going to create that login and alter those rules. With those rules altered, we can go to our dashboards here and we can see underneath Azure SQL databases that we are now monitoring our new Stack Overflow large database. Good thing because I'm running out of space there. I'm a little bit low on storage but let's add an Elastic Pool. So we're gonna select Elastic Pool. We're gonna fill in our subscription, the server that is hosting our Elastic Pool, the Elastic Pool name, and a connection database. In this case, I'm calling it AnchorDB. This is our Anchor database. This is gonna contain the DMVs that are required to look at the memory, the space, the CPU using being utilized by our Elastic Pool. And if we need to add resources to our Elastic Pool, we're not going to do read intent and we're not going to use SQL authentication here. So once we have that ready, we are going to go ahead and hit add. Once we hit add, what do we need to do? Well, we need to grant access to it. Rinse, repeat. You're going to see a lot of similar processes here. So let's go ahead and select that, copy that command, connect back to our Azure Data Studio and within the master database, run that create login and alter server role statements. With that done, now what we need to do is we need to add the databases that are within our Elastic Pool. The Anchor database isn't going to do that. That is going to monitor our CPUs, our memory, our space, and so on. In order to get more details about the queries running within our databases within our Elastic Pool, we need to add each database we have within that Elastic Pool to our SQL connectors. Now, keep in mind, if you have a really dense Elastic Pool, there could be gaps in the monitoring if the resources aren't available. So only alter those databases within the Elastic Pool that are required to be monitored. And you can see on the screen that we have those now. And if we go back to our dashboards, we're gonna see that we're monitoring our Elastic Pool and we're monitoring our new Azure SQL databases. Let's select on Azure Elastic Pools here. And then under Elastic Pools, there you can see it's showing us information that we're monitoring. And if we go back to our dashboard and our databases, you can see that DB1 and DB2 that are part of that Elastic Pool are now being monitored as well. Well, we have one more thing we wanna monitor. We wanna monitor a managed instance. Let's see how we can do that, but even better, we're going to monitor that using SQL authentication. So we're going to choose our SQL managed instance, fill in all the appropriate information there as we have previously. And here we're going to choose use SQL authentication. 
Now you're going to need a key vault to be able to do this. So you can see there I'm connected to my key vault. We're going to create two secrets here. We're going to create a login secret and a password secret. You can see there on the top, I have my login secret. And on the bottom, I have my password secret. So let's drill into that a little bit. Now, our database watcher, data DB watcher login. What we are going to use when we create our access to our database server is the secret value for this named secret within our key vault. Also, let's go ahead and dig in a little bit deeper. Let me repeat that one more time. We are not going to use the name that we created for our secret. We are going to use the secret value as our login into our SQL Server. We'll look. We'll see what that looks like. And same thing here for our secret data database watcher password secret. For the values we're going to pl plug into the login script, it's going to be the secret value for this secret name that we're going to plug in. And we're going to look at that here. And we're going to show you how you do that here in the database watcher SQL connector. For our SQL name for login name, we're going to put in here the name of the secret and the name of the password that we created there. We're not going to use the secret value. But when we use our create statement here, the create login for the login name placeholder, that is going to be the secret of the secret name. So in this case, it we would copy that. And for the password placeholder, it's going to be the secret of the secret name that we created on the previous screen. Then you're going to fill in some other information here, right? You're going to change the login name placeholder to match up there. And then you're going to create a user in the master database, MSDB database, that represents your login. But let's go over this one more time. Here you can see on the screen, login name placeholder is equal to that. And it's going to be the secret value there. And same with our password. It's going to be equal to the secret value of our secret name within Key Vault. Once we go ahead and modify those scripts and add that, we can then go back to our dashboard here in SQL targets. You can see that we've added our managed instance. Let's go back to our dashboard and look at that. We are now managing our Azure SQL Managed Instance and we've got all the information. And if we wanted to, we could start drilling in there. So what did we look at today? We looked at how we could add three of our SQL connectors, our Azure SQL DB, our Elastic Pool, the databases within that Elastic Pool, and our Managed Instance using SQL Logins. You would know where we like to keep this going in the comments down below. Let us know what you think about Database Watcher. And as always, be good to each other.